guess I will be addressing uh, the topics of evolution in some ways of notational systems uh, and what does a mu musical notation system mediate. I will be doing that in a rather way that I will be tracing the devel development of my experiments with notation. So just to demonstrate how I'm thinking about notation, so my research focuses on notation as a phenomenon. And being a composer, this interest relates, of course, to music notation. My approach revolves around thinking notation differently, and in order to think notation differently, I make it sort of abstract or virtual, and try to look at its behavior, its function, structure, both from within music and outside it. I'm interested in the directionality of notation, the aims and roles of notations, perhaps the intentions behind it, and how these aspects can be transformed through various experimental and conceptual means. What I mean by directionality relates to how notation in the context of music is usually thought of as a practical tool, uh, but nevertheless a necessary step on the road to the realization of a piece of music. That is its direction, or vector, if you like. It aims for performance and sounds. That is the ultimate goal, to instruct a performer who can communicate the resulting sounds to the audience. And one of my main questions is simply, can that be possibly otherwise? So the title of my talk states that notation is or has been a background aspect of music, sound being a dominant as the foreground. In my approach to experimenting with notation, I aim to prob problematize its conventional position, functionality, directionality, and its role as a background element. So, in a way, my aim is to bring it somehow to the foreground or to the surface, which might or should alter the other constituents of music, and of course, notation itself. In order to demonstrate examples of this objective, I will trace uh, a possible evolutionary pathway of a strand of notation called prescriptive notation. Prescriptive notation focuses on the doings or the actions of musicians, so it prescribes actions to be executed instead of indicating how things should sound. So its focus is naturally on the physical movements and the materiality of instruments. And the instrumental and bodily spaces are employed in order to map out those actions. An important aspect of this kind of notation is that it has distanced itself from sound, or almost detached itself from it. And here's just a little example of prescriptive notation employed in my piece, Desiring Machines, which is used on the poster for this symposium. I thought I should mention a little bit that, <laughs> that connection. But of course, we can trace this kind of notation to Lachemann and Berio, and all the way to the tablature notation of the early music. Uh, my conclusion about prescriptive notation is that this kind of notation is not necessarily involved with sound. So why not employ it accordingly or for other kind of instruments or activities as a way to explore or develop that aspect further? So some of my experiments with notation therefore si simply involved putting prescriptive notation into contact with other areas or, or other kind of activities, activities that were kind of outside of music. I call this decontextualized notation, which can be described as notation that finds a non-musical activity and notates it through its prescriptive dim dimension, that is, its actions. And importantly, not in order to explore its sonic dimensions, but its notational dimension of those activities. So I did pieces for activities such as penciling and erasing, and for the activity of typing on a computer keyboard. The keyboard piece is particularly important for me because there the directionality of notation changed. And I'm going to use that piece to explain a little bit what followed. Here's just an example of the piece for erasing. Here we still have a piece that could be said to have a conventional position and functionality, but its directionality is slightly unconventional since it's not aiming for performative sonic results. It does, however, have sonic results, but there are perhaps other performative results that potentially override the sonic which are of a graphical nature. So the piece for penciling and erasing were works outside of music in some sense, but notationally they still functioned as music notation in the sense that they suggested a performance and a certain result of that performance. But looking at the keyboard piece, 
the conventional model doesn't quite fit anymore, since there are no performative results intended. Although the piece does map out an activity, it is not really meant for performance. It could, of course, be performed, but that is not the aim of the piece, nor the aim of the notation. The piece is not about that. So the here results are that the notational process is not to be moved on to the performer, towards realization, but rather the notations become the work. And why this happens is mainly because of the notational technique and the materials of the piece. The base material is an existing text, and the text is not, is not really to be communicated. It's there, but merely as a way to activate the notational technique and to gain a certain perspective. So within this piece, each word becomes a figure or a pattern which emerges from the notational technique. So what stands out, if you can speak about an outcome or results, is that we get a new perspective on words through the notational process of mapping the text through the computer keyboard. And we could say that the notation here releases a graphical or notational world instead of a sonic world. The QWERTY keyboard, together with the words, or the order of letters, become an instrument for this notation. The resulting patterns of figures is purely the interaction of these spaces, the particular notation space, keyboard space, and its relationships with hands, words, and letters. So notation is here functioning as a relationship tool, placing different spaces into relation and giving us a new perspective on this relation. This piece marks, therefore, change in some way in the direction of notation, because here the notation is pointed at an existing phenomenon, the text in this case, and aims to contemplate it, to reflect it, or to see it otherwise through prescriptive notation. And importantly, it does this not through performance. The notation is, in a sense, the performance. It becomes the work. And the medium of communication is through that visual channel. Notation can, in this way, be said to mediate new perspectives on a particular relationship, which I think is always an active aspect of notation, although it's usually quite a background aspect. After the keyboard piece, I wondered how I could deploy this kind of notation back to music. And since I was working with the idea of pointing notation towards some existing phenomena, or working with the directional aspect of notation, I simply chose a piece of music to activate a similar notational situation. The renotations series are visual scores that renotate classical works for piano or fragments of those works. And based on these above ideas, the aim was to place notation one step further to the front or to restructure the functionality of notation by putting notation on the foreground. But also to place music as a sonic phenomenon in the background or even as an internal aspect alone that is not being part of the sense experience, only purely conceptually present. This deals with a reversal of direction and therefore a reordering of background foreground functions. Just an example of this, here is a fragment from Schumann's Kreisleriana, as it appears within conventional notation. And here's the same fragment as it appears in the piece Renotations 3. Here things are simplified to their most basic or most abstract or most concrete. The connections from the beam is now a connection between time and a specific physical location. This is the main difference. The note head becomes a physical location and therefore a spatial element and thus detached from the timeline in some ways. It does not move along the timeline. In this manner, spatial and temporal elements are combined and the notation only refers to actual locations within the piano space but in relation to some time axis. And like with the keyboard piece, these notations are not meant for performance. They have no next step. The notations are the work, and the work is about releasing patterns or gaining a visual perspective on existing pieces or relationships. We could say that these notations are performative, that they give interpretations. So how to proceed? In the follow-up project, the Schumann Sculpture, I worked with the idea of, notating, of that the notation could be pointed or connected to actual physical locations, and also with notation as an activator of minor parts or, or background parts where notation shifts to the surface and drags along with it parts of music that are usually hidden or are only considered accessory. And this is an ongoing questioning of roles, the role of notation, role of instrumental parts, internal and external, role of material and materiality, the role of performers, etc. When shifting background aspects or elements to the foreground in this way, 
the conventional foreground aspects like sound and performer shift to the background and are only present conceptually or as a some sort of history. A reversal of functions takes place. The sculpture, this is my final. <laughs> the sculpture is a step towards bringing the background stratum of music even further to the front. Here, the infrastructure of the piano, the hammers, the wood extension of the keys, the action sets, all these minor functioning strata of music, along with notation, are brought to the surface and become foreground parts of the work. And another important step here is that the notation now has a very intimate relationship with instruments. It literally connects itself to a specific physical or material locations while emphasizing the importance of these silent functions or silent strata of the music machine. So this is something I'm starting to call concrete notation. And I think I will be just end with these last thoughts on what possibly could define concrete notation. So in, a, in some ways, concrete notation ceases to be a graphical symbolic system. It connects actual physical material together. It's a part, it becomes part of the material and the work. It becomes a visual and spatially independent phenomena. It's three-dimensional. It reverses its directionality. Sound and performance become a past, not a future. And it forms this dialogue between spaces, instrumental parts, microspaces, histories, and also actual spaces. And this forms these new perspectives on these relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you.